the classic psychological understanding of hate is that it stems from an us and them perspective or worldview. We have in groups and we have out groups. Um, inherently speaking, when we're born, we don't have any hate in us. Uh, we're not born hating. Um, we learn to hate. But what we do have in us is a preference for people like us, whatever us might be. Now, us can be anything. It can be white, black, uh, male, female, uh, heterosexual, homosexual. What us is, is a social construction of what your family is at the moment in time. Um, and that innate preference for people like us, which is an evolutionary trait that was designed to keep us safe in the groups with which we, within which we were born, um, is not necessarily a bad thing. It, it, it does create a, a, a great environment for deep cooperation within your in-group, which means you're more successful at certain endeavors in life as a group. If that was back in hunter-gatherer times, you were incredibly more successful if you had uh, great cooperation in your in-group at hunting and gathering, for example. Um, that preference for us on its own is, is, is not nefarious, it's not a bad thing. It can though be weaponized and it can change into the detriment of them or the discrimination against them, whoever them may be. Um, and that is something that's learned. So that is something that we learn through socialization from our parents. It's something we learn uh, from our peers in the school playground. Uh, it's something we're taught and told by the media. So if, if we're growing up in an all white family, for example, uh, and around all white peers um, that have a negative attitude towards say uh, 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 black uh, individuals, and if that's reinforced from childhood all the way through from your parents, all the way through school, and the media is also biased towards, towards black individuals, uh, that preference for us can turn into a, a derogation of them. But that's learned from, from culture and society and, and socialization. Um, at the extreme end, um, that can be weaponized even further into hateful violence by uh, hateful subcultures. So that would be sort of extremist subcultures, far right subcultures in the, say in this example, uh, whereby individuals' frustration stemming from their own failures in their lives are, are projected onto a, a group of them, whoever them may be. Um, inappropriately, uh, we end up blaming them for all the ills in society, for all the things that have gone wrong with us and all the things that have gone wrong in our community. Uh, we scapegoat them. Uh, and the more we tell each other these stories in the pubs, in the homes, over dinner, etc., the more ingrained it becomes and the more we believe it to be fact. But it, the truth of the matter is, is, is it's not their fault at all. Uh, they're just convenient scapegoats for the frustrations you might be feeling at any one point in time. Now, how social media makes all that worse is because it fosters contact, it's claimed it fosters contact between in-groups and out-groups, but that contact is rarely positive contact. Now, if it was positive contact on social media, we'd actually see a reduction in intolerance and a reduction in hate. But if you have negative contact that reinforces negative stereotypes between your group and whatever other group there is out there that's in opposition to you, then ultimately, things get worse. Um, you are more likely to engage in hate speech against them because your negative stereotypes are being reinforced by what you're seeing and hearing from your in-group in your own echo chamber, your own bubble, uh, and, and you only end up seeing the bad things in, in relation to the other group on social media. You never get to burst your own filter bubble to see what it's like on the other side, if you see what I mean. Um, so social media makes the us and them in more extreme. Uh, it's 24 seven as well. You can't turn social media off. Uh, you always log in at any point in time. There is there's very rarely downtime. Um, there's always a tweet there or always a Facebook post there waiting for you to read. And the more extreme it is, the more likely you are to engage, etc. cetera. Um, and the internet also has this strange uh, uh, characteristic that makes individuals uh, more disinhibited. Um, a bit like when you're drunk. If, I guess. So when you when you drink alcohol, you become disinhibited. You say things you might otherwise not say in a sober state. The internet, because of the perceived distance between yourself and the people you're talking to, and because of the perception that the police don't do anything if you do something bad online, and the chances of you being caught are minimal, which is still the case, 
uh, that frees up individuals to say things that they probably wouldn't say in the street or around the dinner table. Um, they're more likely to express hateful sentiment. They're more likely to become irate uh, and more emotional on social media than they would do uh, offline, if you like. So there are several things going on there. There's, there's greater as and neming because the in-group and the out-group seem more further apart on social media. And it, it's, a, it's a wholly disinhibiting environment. We feel much more free to express our emotions on social media because we don't think there's going to be any consequence.